Hello and welcome. This is a review of the iRobot Roomba Max 705 combo, focusing on its hard floor and carpet cleaning performance. The robot features iRobot's typical dual brush design. However, the two side brushes are not an iRobot design, but come from the ODM manufacturer Pika, which also produced this robot. For testing the carpet cleaning performance, I simulate real life conditions by using certified test dust and many cleaning passes. The test dust is also used by testing institutes and simulates household dust. For my standardized test, I use three different types of carpet. First, a red carpet with a very dense 2 cm long pile onto which 10 gram of test dust are applied and then embedded as shown. Then a carpet with a very soft 2 cm long pile which was also soiled with 10 gram of test dust as described above. Finally, I test a dirt mat, which is soiled with only 5 gram of the test dust, but is also tested with a spot-on soiling of 10 gram of bird sand. The test was done with the maximum suction level selectable. Also, carpet boost is enabled if available since some models can boost even higher as the maximum selectable suction. With the exception of the red carpet, all carpets were cleaned in a checkerboard pattern, that is with horizontal and vertical lines. The red carpet was only cleaned in horizontal lines because the pile has a cleaning direction and cleaning with vertical lines negatively impacts cleaning performance with this type of dirt. It was weighed after 7 and 14 cleaning strokes. The dirt mat test ended after 7 cleaning strokes as I believe this type of carpet is manually cleaned more often. All tests were performed 3 times. The middle result is shown, however due to the test design all 3 runs usually show the same result. Before we take a closer look at the results of the 705 combo, I want you to understand that I'm primarily testing dust pickup here, not some run-of-the-mill crumb pickup. The reason for this is quite simple. These days almost any $100 robot can pick up something like that without any problems. Differences in results, especially with very short test times, are primarily due to chance, also due to the influence of the side brush in such tests. Furthermore, particle sizes, for example in rice, are not standardized and given the small number of particles, you would have to place each grain of rice in exactly the same place for each test to be able to compare robots. And even then, you only have a test of how quickly a potentially larger buildup of coarse particles is removed, but by no means a simulated long-term test for dust removal. First, let's take a look at the results of the 705 combo compared to other iRobot models and also to a 3i device from the same ODM. We'll start with the dirt pickup test using bird sand on the dirt mat. As we can see, the combo only achieves 82% here. That's not a particularly good result. Good devices reach at least 90% in this test. And we can clearly see that the 705 combo falls behind other iRobot models, especially when compared to the 980 or the S9. When it comes to removing the test dust from the dirt mat, the results aren't particularly good either. Here, the 705 combo only achieves 38%. That's on the same level as the 10 Max or the Combo J9, both of which are also not good vacuum robots. Compared to the other models, the 705 combo clearly falls behind, while once again, the Roomba 980 and the S9 are well ahead. For the test dust pickup on the blue soft carpet, the results look even worse. The 705 combo's result is shown all the way on the right. Only 19% was achieved after a total of 14 passes, with no improvement after 7 passes. And this result is really, really poor. It's the worst result I've measured so far. As we can see, it's miles away from reaching the level of a Roomba 980 or an S9. Interestingly, even the standard 705 performs significantly better here, since it's also equipped with dual brushes. However, its entire airflow design is closer to the original setup we know from other iRobot devices like the J-Series, which while still not optimal compared to the 980 or S9 and in fact representing a step backward, nevertheless delivers better results than the 705 combo. Finally, we have the result for the red carpet, which is the most difficult to clean. Here the 705 only manages a pickup rate of 10%, as we can see all the way on the right in the chart. That is really, really poor. Overall, it's actually the third worst result I've measured on this carpet so far. Only the Mova Z50 and the Ufi S1 Pro performed worse. And again, we can see that the 705 is far off from other iRobot models, which themselves don't perform particularly well on this carpet. 
Even a Roomba 980 or Roomba S9 don't deliver top tier performance here anymore as we'll see shortly in the overall comparison. Of course, it's no surprise that this robot didn't make it into my top 7 lists. I'll just let the ranking run here. For each of the devices listed, you can find detailed cleaning performance tests on my channel. And as we can see, the top spots are occupied by devices from Dyson, AEG or Electrolux, in some cases also an Ecovacs X9 and an iRobot Roomba S9. Fiber pickup, on the other hand, works really well. I tested this using viscose fibers, which were worked into the carpet. After just two passes, there were hardly any fibers left visible, if any at all. You probably can't even see them in the recording. This is exactly where iRobot typically performs very well. The same applies to other robots equipped with iRobot's dual rollers. They also handle fiber pickup effectively. There's really nothing to complain about here. I'll probably do a more detailed test on this in the future, comparing different manufacturers and their various main roller designs. Finally, my hard floor test. Here I again use certified test dust. It's a bit finer compared to what was used for the carpets, but it also simulates typical household dust that you find on hard floors. And as seen, 0.45 grams of dust were applied to the test surface. First, the robot is allowed to clean the dirty area in suction-only mode. Eight cleaning passes at maximum suction power. After that, the area is wiped once with a microfiber cloth and the grout lines are also checked. As we can see, the result here is not particularly good. But this is also the typical outcome for other combo vacuum mop robots, so it's no surprise. One surprise, however, was that the Roomba S9 also didn't manage to get the area completely clean with its suction function. This indicates that the cleaning head iRobot uses here doesn't seal particularly well against hard floors. That's also because the front roller doesn't rest directly on the floor, resulting in a gap causing suction and airflow leaking. As a result, the cleaning performance of the Roomba S9 on dusty dirt isn't entirely optimal either. Next we test the whole thing again with the mopping function. That means first 8 passes in suction only mode at maximum suction power and then in smart scrub mode, that is using the Y pattern with the medium water setting, the area is mopped twice. After that we wait 10 minutes and then take another look at the surface. And as we can see it really is perfectly clean this time. Other robots with a mop roller or rotating mops haven't managed to achieve that when it comes to cleaning the grout lines. However, we also saw that a Roomba 205, which also uses the Y pattern, was able to achieve the same result without any issues with its simple mopping function. Drawing a conclusion here is not that easy. On the one hand, we have the rather weak carpet cleaning performance. Anyone expecting more than just a surface clean will be disappointed. The surface cleaning works well, but much cheaper models can easily achieve the same nowadays. A clear positive, however, is the fiber pickup. Here, iRobot's dual roller design still delivers excellent results. In my tests, this has consistently been the best solution on the market so far. Nevertheless, the overall package for carpet cleaning is far too weak for me, especially considering the high price. Moving on to hard floor cleaning. Here, the familiar problem shows up again. The suction function, also influenced by the brush head design, is not optimal for dust pickup as we also saw with the S9. However, when combining suction with the mopping function, the robot achieves very good results even in grout lines. Many other devices fail here since they don't use a Y pattern. At the same time, one has to admit that simpler robots with a Y pattern such as the 205 combo deliver similarly good results. Overall, the combination of a self-cleaning roller and Y pattern probably currently provides the best cleaning performance on hard floors available on the market. I will test this more precisely with different types of dirt. 
Extremely soiled floors with large amounts of liquid, however, I will not simulate, as I don't see any meaningful use case for such robots in that scenario. It would only make a mess due to the main wheels getting wet and dirty. Or in the case of the 705 combo, also the main and side brushes, since they cannot be lifted. This brings me to another point. The Y pattern alone cannot be considered a unique selling point. It is not technically difficult to copy. Since we are dealing here with an ODM device and the ODM manufacturer Pika even offers the platform on their website, it is very likely that in the near future we will see similar robots on the market, possibly with an even better feature set. That does not really speak in favor of the Roomba 705 combo, especially if you can afford to wait a bit longer. Of course, this is speculation, but I see no reason why it shouldn't happen unless iRobot managed to secure some kind of contractual exclusivity. On top of that, there are numerous issues with the software and firmware, meaning both the app and the robot itself. These include the carpet sensor problem, the delayed carpet protection function, and many limitations in the app. For example, there is no option to view obstacles or to adjust the sensitivity of obstacle detection. Settings for the station are also extremely limited. Likewise, there is no meaningful fine-tuning of the automatic dirt detection, and in the cleaning settings there is currently a glitch that causes chosen settings to be reset. Issues like these significantly cloud the overall picture. For these reasons, I would currently advise against buying this robot. It is better to wait until at least the software has been improved. I will make a separate video about the entire new iRobot lineup in the context of ODM. Covering that here would go beyond the scope. There will also be a more detailed analysis of the mopping function. In addition, I will finally upload a video showing how well certain pure vacuum robots handle the type of dust contamination demonstrated. Honestly, I expected the S9 to perform well in that category, but as we saw, it didn't. Still, it does perform better than many other robots out there. So yeah, more content is on the way. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.